Hi, I'm Malin Jordan from LearnColorGrading and FilmSimplified.com. DaVinci Resolve was updated to uh, version 14. This update of Resolve from 12.5 to 14 uh, focused more on audio and editing than on uh, color grading. However, I think one of the biggest advances for DaVinci Resolve is the addition of Fairlight. I mean, come on, now you have an entire audio mixing and mastering suite right inside DaVinci Resolve, and it's one of the best in the world. I do understand that this channel is called Learn Color Grading, and uh, we're here to learn color grading, but I think we have a lot of emphasis also on DaVinci Resolve. And a lot of filmmakers struggle with audio usually, so I created a Fairlight course. However, I felt that it's important to put like parts of the course itself here on YouTube. This course will not only focus on Fairlight itself, we will also be discussing the basics of digital audio, along with understanding the main effects that you will be dealing with when you're working with audio in general. For example, we'll be looking at parametric equalizers, how to uh, deal with them and understanding every single control. So let's start. When you first open the Fairlight interface, it looks a bit confusing because all of the panels are closed. First, you have your transport controls up here, followed by the tools. We will be discussing tools later, and this is where you edit your audio clips inside your timeline. Notice the small drop down menu here. This is where you can choose what timeline to work on. This is a new project, so I do not have any timelines now. But once I have timelines, you'll find the name of the timeline we're working on here, and you can switch between timelines. These are your time and selection controls. And just like other interfaces in Resolve, we have these button here to show extra panels, and we have extra panels here also to the right. The first button here is the media pool. Once you click it, you'll have the media pool uh, shown here. To the left, you have your folders, so now we have no folders, we only have the master bin here. And once you click on a bin, you can see the files inside the bin here. And this is where you can find your smart bins. We'll get into these later. The next button we have is the effects library. If we click it, you can find the VST audio effects you add here. Notice that now I have two panels open. This is the media pool panel, and this is my effects library. I can choose to close them. And this is our index. It will show you the index, which in track mode works like an EDL, or I can choose to view my markers here. Let's close this. And now let's take a look on the panels to the right here. First, you have one of the most important panels, which is the mixer. Once I click it, I have the mixer view to the right here. Currently, it doesn't have any tracks. This one on the right is not a track, it's my output. Once I add tracks, my tracks will be shown here. Now let's close the mixer and move to meters. If I click on meters here, this panel opens to the top. This panel is divided into three main sections. These are my meters. This will show me the amplitude or how high the volume is on every single track. We'll see this later. My control room audio controls. And here I can monitor my film in case I needed to sync audio from my track to certain shots. Let's close meters and take a look at the inspector here. Now, if I click it, this is my inspector. There is nothing to inspect here now because I'm not selecting any audio file here. Once I click on any audio file here, you'll be able to see its properties in the inspector. And finally, we have our metadata controls. This is where we can view metadata about our files. Metadata are extra pieces of information that are added to your file in order to make categorizing it much easier. This is the main interface of Fairlight. Now let's discuss digital audio. Until recently, analog audio was a standard. If you remember uh, cassette tapes, these were an analog source for audio. So what makes an audio analog or digital and how do you measure resolution? Let's take a closer look at an audio wave. Let's zoom in. This is how a small part of the audio wave would look inside. This is an analog audio. It's just an electrical current that is recorded through some sort of a medium, a magnetic medium. So in order to digitize this audio or create a digital copy of it, you have to allow the computer to measure it. However, everything inside the computer is math. The computer doesn't work without understanding things in a mathematical way. So as a solution, the analog to digital converter inside your device, all of the devices we have now can simply convert any analog signal to a digital signal. The computer will take snapshots throughout the audio file. So the computer will take a lot of snapshots to recreate that audio wave. However, there's a small problem here. If you zoom in into one of these snapshots, you will notice that 
For example, here we have a snapshot and here we have a snapshot, but in the middle, there is empty space, there is nothing. So what your computer would do is that it will interpolate the position. So it will guess what was there between these two points. Again, let's repeat this very fast. The computer took a snapshot here, then it took another snapshot here. So it has two snapshots, but in the middle, there is only empty space and the computer will have to guess what was inside here. Now, the solution to this problem is to make the computer take more snapshots. With more snapshots, you will have less space. And with even more snapshots, you will have a more accurate representation of our wave. So let's talk about resolution here. Resolution in audio equals sample rate plus the bit depth. It's what you should take into consideration. here. Now, sample rate is simply how many snapshots the computer took per second. And bit depth is simply the resolution of every single snapshot. And the lowest quality you should be working with in this age is the CD resolution, which takes 44,100 snapshots per second at 16 bit per snapshot. Anything above this is high fidelity audio, and you should always try to work with the highest quality of audio you can work with. Now we're going to start discussing audio effects. In this course, we're going to be discussing the two most important types of audio effects, the equalizer and dynamics. Let's start with the equalizer. This is the equalizer inside DaVinci Resolve. Notice that down here, you have the frequencies. So you start from low frequencies or bass on the left, all the way to high frequencies or treble on the right. These are the controls. If you pull any of the controls up, you increase the volume of this particular frequency. And if you pull it down, you reduce the volume. Remember how gain uh, controls the amplitude or how loud is the volume. The equalizer is the same thing, but instead of controlling the loudness of the entire audio spectrum in a file, it controls the loudness for a certain range of frequencies. So for example, you increase the loudness of the treble but not the mid or the bass. We'll see more samples in coming lectures. So here in your equalizer, you have the treble to the right, the mid and the bass to the left. Now let's discuss the controls. How do we control our equalization? Now we're going to really simplify this now. Let's take a look at the three main types of equalizer adjustments. First, you have the notch. Now this is our EQ and we have all the frequencies from 20 to 20,000. The first question that you need to answer is what frequency do you want to control? For example, we want to control 3000 because for example, we have a voiceover and we want to increase the high parts a bit. So we have a point here at 3000. Notice that now we only determined that we want our changes to affect the frequency 3000 but we did not change it yet. The second most important question is how much do we want to increase it or reduce it? For example, 6 dBs. So this is how you increase it. So we just increased 3000 by 6 dB, but notice something very important here. We did not increase a single frequency because that's just a single frequency and the human ear wouldn't be able to notice the difference. Notice that when we increased 3000, at the same time, we included other frequencies around it. So for example, we included the 2500 and the 3500. The third question here we need to ask is the Q control or how many frequencies to include. For example, we can include more frequencies around our main frequency of 3000 or we can include less frequencies for a more targeted adjustment. Let's see this control on the equalizer here. First, you have this sign. This means that this is a notch control now. This is the frequency. This is where you say, okay, I want to increase or reduce a certain frequency. And for example, here it's 800. Then you have the question of what's the gain, how much to increase it or reduce it. And finally, you have the Q factor, how many frequencies around it to include in this adjustment. Let's take a look at the second type of control, shelf. Again, we have the same illustration here, and we answer the first question is what frequency to start from. The second question would be how much to increase everything above this particular frequency, for example, 6 dB. So this is how our adjustment would look. This means that we're increasing all the frequencies that are more than 3000, so 3000, 3500, all the way to 20,000. Or for example, you can ask how much do you want to increase everything below it? So in this case, this is how our adjustment would look like. So we increased everything that is less than 3000. So we included the 500, the 100, the 1000, 
This will all make more sense once we get it into samples. So let's take a look at it at the uh, equalizer we have in Resolve. This sign here means that this is a low shelf adjustment. So this is an adjustment that will affect all the frequencies below our selected frequency now. And this is the sign for a high shelf. So this will increase or reduce all the frequencies above or more than the currently selected frequency. Then we have the frequency selector. This is where we tell uh, the equalizer that we want to reduce or increase everything below 50, for example. And this is the gain control that simply tells us how much do you want to increase or reduce the gain here. Finally, there is the cut control. The cut control is actually very easy. It cuts certain frequencies above or below our selected frequency. So for example, here we have what frequency to start from, 3000. Now, what will happen here is that we will cut all the frequencies that are more than 3000. So we will be cutting the 4000, 5000, all the way to 20,000, we will cut it. So the high cut actually keeps the base or low parts and get rid of the high parts. And the other way around, what frequency to start from, we can actually have a low cut adjustment that actually cuts all the frequencies below the currently selected frequency. So we'll be cutting the 500, the 100, and the 1000. And let's take a look at it here. First, this is uh, the cut control. This sign here means that we have a low cut. So we're cutting the low parts. And this sign here means that we have a high cut. So we're cutting the high parts and you can choose the frequency to start the cut from, and you have the gain if you wanna reduce it even further. Again, we'll be uh, taking a look at samples when we uh, start mixing our audio. One last thing here, why would you use an equalizer? Now think of your film or your uh, audio mix that you're doing right now. It has a lot of sounds that are going at the same time. So for example, you have two people talking and you have like a background noise of maybe a street. You can always reduce the volume of the street street noise in order to make your dialogue more clear. However, you can also use an equalizer. So for example, your dialogue will take the mid and the high parts and you will remove the bass from it. And for the uh, noise out in the street, you can keep the bass and maybe reduce the high and the mid so you can mix both sounds better. So I hope that was beneficial. I hope that uh, answered some of your questions about Fairlight and how to basically deal with it. And uh, thank you.